read the scripture. After that, I'll give you the title. We'll pray and then we'll commence with our ministry moment. Again, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 31 is where we will start. Again, congratulations to Sister Kanisha. Amen. Yeah. Being a graduate. All right. Uh, college, the collegiate level. Amen. Amen. Getting that degree on yesterday and uh, Friday. And we give God praise. Come on, clap for some yeah. We're so proud of her. Yes. And just honored for her uh, being connected to this house in the way that she is. Amen. Luke chapter 12, verse 31. If you have it, would you say amen? Amen. Wonderful. The word of the Lord reads, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. I really could stop there. But let me keep reading. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have and give alms or good deeds. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corruptive. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girt about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. 38. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, uh, blessed are those servants. 39 says, and this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. The word of the Lord today, uh, I'm going to attempt to use uh, this title as we preach, the process of keeping watch. Mm. The process of keeping watch. The process of keeping watch. Let us pray. God, we thank you once again on today for the faithfulness of your name. It is your name, God, that rules and reigns in our lives. And so as we are now begin to approach your word, we ask for the anointing, God, to make things simple. We thank you for the power and the tenacity necessary to preach effectively for your glory. I ask God now that you reveal to us yes. the secrets of your word, that we would leave this place empowered and our lives impacted to be better in the kingdom of God. Yes. We pray, God, that you would just have your way. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary, that the people no longer see me, but see you standing tall in me. Preach through me, teach through me as only you can. Pull on you now for supernatural recall of your word. Bring back to my mind every thought, every example, every, every illustration necessary to bring across this point today of how you'll show us the process of keeping watch. We bless you for what you will do, and we thank you in advance for what you've already done. Speak to our hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The process of keeping watch. When I began to uh, try to get into the thought and how we would share today uh, with Donna, I began to, uh, in prayer, just ask God, well, Lord, what is it exactly that you want me to share? Uh, I know it's a lot of a lot of just scripture in the Bible, and I'm like, well, God, I need to hear what the now word is uh, for those that will be here on Sunday. And uh, one of the things that kept ringing in my mind, Sister Shale, one of the things that kept coming back into my heart was that the hour we're living in is so filled with many types of distractions and problems. Uh, regardless of uh, the political environment, regardless of our social situation, the very nature of this time of year causes for there to be an increase of distractions. Uh, this broke all night according to history, and they, they've done studies for the past 20 years, that this is always the time where crime takes up. Mm. This is always the time, the months of November and December are always the moments that theft 
is on the rise. Because what's happening is as people are shopping and people are buying and preparing for Christmas and spending this money, a lot of times their attention is sometimes, you know, kind of just thrown off and deterred because they're so focused on getting this G.I. Joe. And what happens is when I let my guard down in this environment, a thief comes and he's cunning enough to realize that because I'm not paying attention, I'm a prime target. Mm. I'm talking already to death. Yes, you are. There, there has to be a measure in our lives of true discipline that even when exciting things are going on around us, we still have the ability to remain focus. Wow. The word today is talking about how in fact God likens focus to the kingdom of God. He said that there will be times, there will be instances in our lives that celebratory things will be going on all around us. But Sister Lipscomb, it is in those moments that we have to be even the more heightened in our focus. What the enemy does is he attempts to rock us to sleep. He attempts to lull us to sleep that activity so that he can come in and wreak havoc while we're not looking. I'm talking to somebody all Day. Your house was real peaceful for the last couple of weeks, but now all of a sudden, it seems like there's a little a new imp that's raising his head in my house. It's trying to disrupt whatever peace was already there. God says it's simply a sign of the season yeah. that we're living in, that we're living in a season where distraction is peaked. Mm. And because distraction verse fruits has been peaked, that's when the enemy comes in, Sister Foster, and he finds his way into the house because he knows our attention is diverted. I, I just want to give you three simple points today. I don't even think I'm going to be up here 15 minutes. I'm going to give you three simple points and I'm out of here. The first thing I want to tell you in the process of keeping watch is that we have to be prepared. Mm. I'm going to take my coat off this week because I forgot last week. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> We've got to be prepared. I, I never uh, broke off night participated in the Boy Scouts. I was never uh, that blessed or um, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, I never participated in Boy Scouts, so I didn't get a lot of the models and a lot of the things that you know these people learn, but I believe in Boy Scouts. Uh, uh, Russ, you took four years in Boy Scouts, Russ? You didn't mess in Boy Scouts. Okay, you did ball. Okay, everything about basketball. Please forgive me. Amen. So, uh, with, with Boy Scouts, you and Girl Scouts. Uh, Girl Scouts. Just join the Girl Scouts right there. Uh, first thing he said, she was in Girl Scouts. I find out new stuff all the time. Amen. All right. So uh, in Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, one of the things that they teach you is you're supposed to be prepared. Yes, sir. Now, uh, so students, in order for one to be prepared, says the Kasha, that simply means that a person is equipped. If God is calling us today to begin to heighten our sensitivity and keep watch, again, the first point is we've got to be prepared. Pastor, how do I get prepared? Thank you so much for asking me. There's a story in the book of Matthew, 25th chapter, first 14 verses. It talks about 10 virgins. The Bible says that of 10, there were five sisters that were wise and five that were foolish. All right, they were all coming, preparing our brother Jenkins to meet the bridegroom. So they had to have oil in their lamps. So they all came, digging his black, they had the oil in their lamps. And the Bible says that they all went to sleep because the bridegroom was delaying his coming. So they turned their lamps back so they can go to sleep. And then in the midnight hour, the bridegroom came. And when the bridegroom came, there were five virgins, Mr. Black, that brought extra oil with them because they knew it was a possibility that they may need it. All right? It was five that bought extra, and it was five that just bought what they thought they needed, and they were going to try to get over. Let me come pick up the church real quick. we got to learn how in a lot of areas and instances of our lives, it's better to have more than it is not to have enough. I'm trying to talk to somebody. I ain't even in your pocketbook right now. I'm in your spirit. Yeah. It's good to have more Jesus than what you think yeah. you're going to need so that when not enough Jesus, oh God, shows up, I can still make it. That's what you're trying to tell me. When, when you think it's not necessary, let me just go there, to come to Sunday school or Bible study because I'm going to get enough Jesus in the preaching moment. God says, what you got to learn is I need you to get all of me that you can yeah. get because there might come something that you weren't prepared for based on what you heard in the yes, 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 so I can never brush get too much Jesus yes. but he, he pushes 
us to say, we got to make sure we've got enough. Preach, sir. Let me talk about Brother Foster real quick, and then yeah. I'm going to get off him real fast. The man of God, he called me. See, this, this is what happens yeah. when, when me and I, these brothers, our brother Nick, these men, are understanding that there's an intensified weight coming their way. Uh, with this <laughs> another level, another level yeah. of call on their life. I'm getting more calls from Bulk Knight, Foster, and Graham than I got in the last year and a half. And I thank God for it. Y'all keep calling and blow my phone up. But the reality is, Brother Foster called me and said, Pastor, I just want you to understand, uh, I got to work overnight tonight. Uh, I've been working overnight night like pretty much all week and I gotta work Sunday night as well but I want you to know I'm gonna be in church. Mm. Amen. My God. And I said, you know, I under my breath says boss, I said, well my God, I remember God got a newfound level of commitment. I thank God. Amen. And I began to listen to him and say, well Pastor, you know, I might be a little tired. You know, I got to really work all night this time. I'm a team leader, so I might be a little tired, but I'm coming to church in the morning. And I said, well bro Foss, I appreciate that. He said, well Pastor, I want you to know uh, I ain't even gonna be late for church. I'm really just calling you to let you know that I'm coming. And I I said, well, my God, what is he trying to do here? What I begin to identify on, is sir. he realizes that there are things coming in his life mm. where he can't just have the status quo of Jesus. Yeah. He's got to have more Jesus than what he thought he might need to prepare himself for the unforeseen issue. I'm trying to preach to somebody already today. When the unforeseen, bro, Kanye, comes to your life, the reason it doesn't throw you off is because you brought enough Jesus with you. Yeah. But if I just got enough Jesus for me, I can't help nobody else get through nothing because I didn't waste it, my Jesus on my own stuff. Wow. So I gotta be willing, yeah. brother, sometime to pick up enough Jesus for somebody else. Yeah, right. Help me to preach the brother. <laughs> That's good. Good. I gotta have enough Jesus in me so that when my spouse starts yeah. acting crazy, the extra in me can fill up what it was that she or he was missing. If I get enough Jesus in me, I'll never be unprepared when an issue comes. My God. Yeah. Trying to help us today. Uh, Christian. The reality is when I'm prepared, that simply means that I've girded myself enough with Jesus yeah. that no matter what comes my way I'll still be able to stand. I got so excited yeah, today when I heard Deacon is black teaching in the Sunday school. I said my God from Zion. She must have been praying when she was getting this word from yeah. the Lord because the reality is what the enemy will use is your unpreparedness to bring doubt to your life. I'm preaching to somebody right there. When I'm not prepared, brother, that's when I start questioning what God really said to me if it was true or not. But if I I'm trying to work night, but the reality is I've got to be prepared. Prepared this means, Sister Lipscomb, that I am in a position that I've been equipped for my next assignment. I'm trying to help somebody today, Brother Jenkins. I hope you're hearing this. That in your time that you're sitting here with us and you're under this tutelage and under this ministry, the understanding for you is, sir, you've got to make sure that you're getting enough equipment in you so that whenever God calls you to this next level, you're going in already ready. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 One of the greatest things I could have ever done, and I'll tell people this until I die, was spend five years sitting under my spiritual father. Yeah. Uh, I was ready. I knew I could preach Brother Nick, I knew I could lead. I was operating as a type of pastor in a previous ministry, so I knew I was ready in my mind. And I could have easily said, let me just go ahead and start my work in 2010. Let me just go ahead and start, and God gonna bless us, and we gonna get there. But just a little so there was a measure of preparation that I needed to get from that man that I couldn't get. Check this out on my own. Let me help somebody here today. God is not gonna wave a magic wand over your life and give you what you need. He puts what you need in a man. Yeah. Help me to preach the day, Jesus. He puts what you need to get to the next level in somebody that you're going to have to submit to in order to get it. Yeah. Ain't no shortcuts in God. Let me come make it real plain today. Ain't no corners that you can cut. Ain't no getting around it in work. God. He's going to make you brush loops, go through a man in order to get to him. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. help me. Yes, All right. So uh, when, when I'm going through the process of being prepared, when I get, let me, let me, let me go and honor the text today. When I get back to the text, he says uh, that blessed is the man that when his master comes, Deacon is black, the master finds him working and doing. 
God said, Brother Paul, like, that there is a blessing connected to your doing. Mm -hmm. That's notable right there. There is a blessing connected to your doing. We've been trying to teach over the course of these last few weeks in Bible study about how God will bless us when we go. The reality is, Brother Burchell, that there is a corresponding blessing every time I continue to go, even when going no longer makes sense. Mm, right. I'm trying to help somebody today that the reality is there's something sister Akasha God says you're going to have to continue to go and to go through in order for the sense of why you went through it to meet you at the end Deacon is black I gotta go back to her Sunday school today she began to talk about how back in 2009 what she went through she didn't understand she was questioning well, God, you know what, what's really going on I understand that she said I'm healed and I believe I'm healed and my faith is there but it wasn't until seven years later that God allows her to bring revelation to you about what she went through. Wow. What am I trying to say? That sometimes the stuff I'm in right now is something to bless somebody seven years from now. Well, that's awesome. right. That's right. And you scratching your head, you pulling your hair out, you plucking your grades out because you worried about why you're going through what you're going through today. But God said, you don't even understand, Sister Dukes, I'm putting somebody in your path six years from now that what you're experiencing today is going to bless. But the only way you can bless them six years is if you stick to it while you go through it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, sir. Being prepared means, bro, black, Mr. Black, that I'm not throwing you in the towel when it got tough. Mm. Yeah. Help me here. Being prepared means I can yeah. take nothing and make something out of it. Mm. Help me here, Lord. Being prepared means that if God has called me, brother Nick, to work in his vineyard, I've got to be willing to work. Pastor, what does that mean, work in his vineyard? If he calls me to be an outward Christian, Pastor, what does that mean? That means that sometimes I'm going to have to take a stand against popular opinion yes, in sir. order for folk to know I'm only being prepared for God's use. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you for a snap, sister. Gosh, that makes me feel good. The reality is when I'm going through my process, sister, Koo, of being prepared, there's going to be difficulty that faces me in my preparedness. Sometimes it's what's preparing me that's really what's killing me. Mm. Wow. I knew that was going to be a good point. With the thing that I'm actually struggling with is the thing God is using to prepare me. How do I embrace it? God says you embrace it with me. Mm. You put me in the middle of the situation with you. Appreciate it. When that, that, that thing comes to your mind to try to throw you off kilter and off course, God says your preparedness is connected to me. And if you continue to be prepared, when I show up, I will approve of what you went through. Let me come. I, I don't want to oh. give my point away too quick, but I got to advance this, Graham. The reality is this. When we look at this particular scripture, it's not Jesus talking about the end of times. He's talking about the end of your situation. Yeah. Let me come pick you up, God. Help me to preach now. All right. When people would hear this, Sister Green, number two, they would think that Jesus was talking about when God sends him back to rapture, to bring the church back, that, you know, it would be blessed if he finds us working when he comes back. While that is good and true, the, the tenor of this particular text, do the research on it, you'll find that the Lord is trying to let us know that he will bring an end to your current situation, that he'll bless you for what you went through. Pastor, help me understand that. He says, when the Lord of the house shows up again, he's going to bless you if he found you working while you were going through. Pastor, what does that mean? When I'm going through whatever difficulty I'm going through in my life right now, God says there is an end, Sister Foster, to that situation. And I just want to make sure that when I decide to show up and stop what you were going through, am I going to find you still worshiping me and still blessing me with the with the dagger still in your back? Am I still going to find you saying thank you to me when folks still got your name in their lips? Am I going to find you still praising me when your family turned their back on you? He said, I'm going to bring an end to the thing, but I got to find you working when I get there. Oh, that's good, sir. So there are ends, brush students, to the things that we go through. Old folk used to say trouble don't last always. They couldn't have been more right. The reality is, Sister Shell, there is an end to this struggle. Whatever it is that you're enduring today, brother, God says to you, sir, there is an end to the struggle. I just want to make sure that when I show up, hey. I find you still working. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want you, Brother Shell, to be moping and complaining 
about woe is me and God, I think it turned your back on me. He said, no, when I show up, I want to still hear you saying thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. Let me give you a little scripture. The word said this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried by fire, might be found unto praise and glory and honor at the appearing of the Lord Jesus. That sounds like a lot of words. Let me give it back to you in slow motion so we can make sure we get it. He said that the trial of my faith, even though it's something that seems like fire coming in my life, Sister Thompson, I realize that when Jesus shows up at the end of it, he wants to find me still being praiseworthy. He wants to find me still being thankful, and he wants to find me with a still having a yes on my lips after I've been through what I've been through. I don't think anybody's here sure. today. He said, when you've been through what you've been through, I still want to hear you tell me thank you when you wanted to turn away from it. I still want to hear you tell me I'm worthy even when you felt like I forsake you. I still want to hear you praise me even when you thought I turned my back on you because I'm still going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. She's not just looking for how you're going to respond to the end of the trial. First point was that I got to be prepared in the process of keeping watch. The second point I want to give you is after I'm prepared, digging this black, I have to also be alert. Mm. I gotta be alert. I gotta be alert. I gotta be alert. I talked about Rochelle, the distractions that are going on in this hour. And I began to tell you about how thieves are really running rampant today. People are stealing packages off porches during the day. People are hacking into your social security number and all kind of identity theft is going on. God says, Father, I need you to tell the people, uh, we're, we're preacher, I need you to tell the people, Brittany, that in fact, I will keep them from those thefts when they are prepared and alert. Mm. Help me make this thing play today, Lord. I will. He says, I will put an angel on guard at your house. Amen. I will put angels on guard around your car. Amen. But I don't need you to be texting while you're driving. I'm just trying to make this thing play for you today. Maybe we can come oh. Yeah, I need you to remain alert while I've got angels on their assignment. Because a lot of the time, what happens, nigga, this black, to the people of God is it's not that God stopped looking after you. You just stopped being alert. Mm. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so share, when I'm alert, I'm now more defensive when I'm doing something. When an alert driver is driving, he's not distracted by text messages or phone calls or uh, uh, toys being thrown or uh, uh, thinking about uh, not wanting to go to work or got your mind somewhere else and trying to lie to while you're meditating on Jesus. He says, when you are alert, Sister Let's Go, I will let you see how my hand works. Wow. 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 I'll show you. Because you were alert. Mm -hmm. So alertness means, brush students, that I'm paying attention to what's around me. Talked to Sister Thompson a couple of days ago, and uh, she was saying, Pastor, you know, when I'm driving, you know, I like to pay attention uh, to my surroundings. I didn't know what's going on around me. I said, that's a lesson you can teach a lot of people. Yeah. Because the reality is this. When I pay attention to my surroundings, when something's off, it'll appear to me because I know it don't belong there. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm never alert, oh. stuff will be there, and I won't even know it's danger because I wasn't paying attention to what God was trying to teach me. Pastor, what are you saying? There are going to be situations and alarms in your life that God is he's buzzing so loud letting you know danger, danger, danger don't do it, but because you want to alert when he was teaching you you think danger is normal mm. wow. Amen. well that's heavy sir that's right. mm -hmm. wow. Good. my goodness Good. when I'm not alert I think danger is normal and it takes somebody that was paying attention to be able to tell me, no, it ain't supposed to look like that. Right, right. Oh, help me here. Oh, help me here. First aid. Let me talk about first aid. She don't mind being used to it. She mind shake it over when we get home. All right. So a first lady is really, Rochelle, probably uh, when it comes to being a passenger. Uh, that's probably like the greatest time of her life because she's going to be 98.7% of that time on the phone. <laughs> she gonna be texting. She gonna be Snapchatting. Thank you for Amen, bro. Foster. Don't don't make him put his hand down. He made a point. I need agreement today. He felt it in the spirit. He made a point. So uh, ninety eight point seven percent of the time, Brother James, first lady texting. Now, first lady don't drive when 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 I'm in the car. I, first lady don't drive. Pastor drive. 
First Lady does not drive. She drives only when she's by herself. All right? Now, uh, First Lady will be taxing away. And when we were getting ready to come down here, Brushell, to, to a brand new area that we never knew of before, and uh, nothing was familiar at all, I wonder, how in the world can you spend this time texting when you have no idea where you are? And what happens in First Lady's life is the Texan finally caught up with her. Because a couple of weeks ago, she found herself having to call her husband. She said, I'm in Concord, but I don't know how to get home. <laughs> I said, well, let me help you understand why you don't know how to get home. Because when the Lord was trying to teach you how to get there, you weren't alert. Yeah. I want y'all to catch this now. And a lot of men clap and I understand. But I want y'all to catch this. The reality is, God will allow your situation to show up before he makes you walk through it on your own. Wow. Amen. Catch it? I'll say it again. So he will allow your situation to show up before he makes you walk through it on your own. Wow. That's the way you're telling me. Before he sends you to walk through danger, he'll show you how danger looks and how to handle it. Yeah. But if I'm not alert while he's teaching me, I'll begin to say, God, you forsook me. No, he said, I was trying to teach you three years ago, but you chose to cry instead of learn from what you were going through. I was trying to let you know to make this turn, but you chose to text instead of listening to what I was trying to tell you. I was letting you know not to go down this road, but you chose to do what you want to do instead of pray. He said, it requires us to be alert if we want to realize how to stay in the race. Right. Amen. Trying to help us here. And I said, First Lady, look, um, you know, I tried to give her a clue, especially when we were coming down. I said, First Lady, now, you don't know this area at all. Um, why don't you just try to get used to the exit numbers? You know, just at least know what exit you stay off of, if nothing else. Be, know the exit. Uh, oh, okay. And back on the phone. And first lady, you know that. And then one day, uh, I found out she was riding. And this, it's amazing what happens when Pastor ain't around. She and her sister, Dean Black, they were going to Virginia for something. The first lady was doing some driving or whatever it was. And, uh, or even just was riding. And, uh, it was a bunch of ladies in the car, Sister Foster. And I said, well, how alert was First Lady? Oh, First Lady didn't touch her phone the whole time. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Interesting. I said, well, my God, hold on now. Let me, let me, let me, let me come investigate this situation. Uh, so you mean to tell me y'all didn't have to tell First Lady to stay awake or First Lady was doing No, nah, she was all talking, you know. She won't do nothing on the phone at all, Pastor. I said, oh, okay, that's amazing. And when she came back home, I ain't even bothered with a girl bought my own, you know, giving us other folk attention. I ain't, I ain't bothered with that. But she began to talk about, I ain't know that such and such was right there off the other state. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't know we were that close to such and such. It's right there. <laughs> Remember when I was trying to tell you, won't you pay attention to what's around? I mean, she came back like she had been somewhere she got been before. Oh my God, did you realize that we this close to the mall? <laughs> First lady, we ride past this week every day. Yes, I know. But it, it was new information because she wasn't alive. Amen. Oh, That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She did. She did. She did. She did. All right. So, uh, we are prepared. Again, the process of keeping watch. And I'm going for it. First lady really want me to stop now. All right. After the process, I'm talking the process of keeping prepared. Keep it watch. We got to first be prepared. That means we have to be equipped. We got to have more than what we think we need so that we can help somebody else. After which we're prepared, we also have to be alert. Being alert means that I'm watching, that I'm aware of my surroundings. I'm passing your life so you can get new revelation. And then you go when you're talking to your friends, you know, let them think you're deep, that you came with all this stuff on your own. You ain't got to tell them you're passing the torch. You ain't got to tell them all night. All right, just let them think, oh my God, you so rev- there's so much revelation in your life. Yeah, just keep letting them think that. All right, uh, there is a difference, bro between being prepared and being ready. Yeah. Now, when we look, going back, I'm going to try to embrace the text before I get out of here. Jesus has talked about all this stuff, about how we got we to watch, we got to be alert, we got to stay focused on what is we doing. He says in the 40th verse, be ye therefore ready also. Mm-hmm. Now, if, if, if ready and prepared, Brother Jenkins, was supposed to be the same word biblically, Jesus never puts also on the back of ready. Mm. Also means, you know, in conjunction with as well as, all right? So when I look at the word ready, I begin to see how there is a difference. The word equipped, Minister Black, uh, I mean, the word prepared speaks of being equipped, all right? It speaks of having the tools necessary. 
But the word ready means to be willing. Prepared means I got it. But ready means I can use it. Mm. Pastor, help me understand because that sounds like you just double talking. Well, thank you for telling me. Uh, Christmas is coming up, right? And, and during the time of Christmas, there are oftentimes, prayerfully I pray, uh, some food being prepared. Oh, yeah. All right? So, so there's some cooking going on, brush, brush, stew. And the food, uh, brush, brush, shell, can be in the oven, is getting prepared. And uh, we pull the turkey out and say, this turkey is prepared. All uh, right? Yeah, it's good, it's good. And folks say, well, we ready to eat. Well, what you'll find is, even though it's been prepared, it's still not ready because it might be too hot to eat. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. It's prepared, but it's not ready. Yeah. A lot of us, help me to preach now, Jesus, why I get out of the way, are prepared, but we're not ready. Help me. We prepared, because we, we equipped, we get in this Bible, we try to change our ways, we try to change the friends we hang out with, or we prepared, we can talk Jesus, but when it's time to go through something, we tell God, I ain't really ready for that. Though. You know, God, I know you've been preaching about faith and not doubting, but I ain't really willing to go through nothing. We are not willing, so that means we're really not ready. Mm. So he says, in order, just the great number one, for you to be effective in keeping watch, in order for you to be effective in paying attention to what's going on, you not only have to have the tools, you also got to be willing to use them. Now, this is the thing right here. How silly is it to know how to do something but not be willing to put that thing into play? Yeah. How crazy is it to know the ways of God but then actually end up in hell? Wow. wow. Preach the day wow. into How crazy is it for me to be a prepared Christian but not a willing Christian? Wow. Help me that. I know all this stuff. I got all the church lingo. I know how to high five my neighbor. I know how to talk back to my neighbor. I know all the church colloquialisms. I know how to look the part. I know how to sound sanctified. But I still find my way to a devil's hell. Why is that? Because you spent your life as a prepared Christian, not a ready Christian. Mm -hmm. Pastor, how do I get ready? Thank you for asking me. All you got to do is be willing to go through with them. I don't think y'all like that future. No. I got to be willing to go through some stuff, mother, for and with the cause of Christ. When I'm willing to go through a thing with Christ, that means I put the mentality of Christ on when I'm going through it. Pastor, help me because I don't read my Bible like that. What, the, what was the mentality of Christ? Well, thank you for asking me. The Bible says in Mark, Matthew chapter 26, verse number 41, Jesus began to talk. He had a little conversation with God. And I'm getting out of here right here. He was having a little conversation with God because he knew it was time for him to die. He tells God, he says, God, listen, while I understand that it is my lot and it is my purpose to die a death in the physical, I'm really not ready to go through with this. I know you called me to do it, but the flesh in me is not willing to go through it. Pastor, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to let you know that ready and willingness or preparedness and readiness will always be a contrast between your flesh and your spirit. Help me to understand that, Pastor. The Bible said that the spirit indeed is willing. The spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is only prepared. Pastor, what are you trying to tell me? I, I know how to prepare my body for what I'm going through, but my body ain't ready to go through what it's going to take to get there in God. I'm not really ready to do all this fasting. Help me now. And to do all this praying that pastor's talking about. I'm not really ready to turn away from some of the practices that I'm still enjoying doing in my quiet time. I'm not, I'm not really ready. I'm getting prepared because I'm getting the word, but I'm not really ready because I ain't turned away yet from the job I'm still doing. He said, I can't do nothing with a prepared Christian. I'm only looking for those that are ready to be doing what God. I want to do so much in the kingdom. I want to sing. I want to dance. I want to shout. I want to usher. I want to preach. I want to teach. I want to do all this. But God said, are you really ready for what it costs to go through what you got to go through? Jesus said, I in my flesh really am not ready to face this challenge. In my flesh, I'm not really ready to continue to endure. But I learned how to tap into my spirit. And the spirit man tells my flesh, you better get in line because I'm ready to go to another level in God. The Bible said that Jesus' flesh had to come under subjection to his spirit. And it's just a walk like Jesus had to bring his sanctified flesh into subjection of the spirit. What do you think you're going to have to do? Sometimes you're going to have to slap yourself and say snap out of what you're going through. You're going to have to shake your flesh and say get up off of me because I'm ready to go to another level in God. I'm not going to let my flesh keep me back any longer. I'm going to let my spirit show my body 
that's fought through to get. He says in Romans 8 and 18, you know, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So what my God will say today, that what you go through, I tell y'all this all the time, which brought it back to my spirit, what you go through as a believer is never designed to take you out. It's always designed to reveal his glory. So when I begin to understand that what he's allowing me to go through is not to kill me, but to bring glory out of me, I begin to appreciate the struggle. I begin to be thankful for the pain. I hate the Lord. But that can only come when I'm ready. I can't force that on nobody. I can't lay hands and deposit that in nobody. That's a personal determination. I'm going to go a step further. I can't even pray that for you. Pastor, I want you to pray. I want you to lay hands. Well, I can do all that, but first thing you've got to do is be willing. Mm. I ain't going to keep, you know, just staying up in the midnight hour over folk that ain't willing. First thing tell all the time, you need to sleep. And I said, well, first thing, I'm trying. But these saints in my spirit. Well, they gonna be alright. I said, yeah, I believe they are. <laughs> but we got to be ready. The pastor's prayers work when he praying over ready people. Mm. Yes. So I told the Lord, Mr. Black. That's happy, sir. I said, well, God, you know what? If they ain't ready, I ain't gonna pray. Yeah. Now, I, you know, I'm going to pray as it relates to covering you and let the Lord bless you as you go. But um, this heavy stuff, I ain't going to keep doing weightlifting on until you get ready. God told me when I'm preparing to raise his son, so I'm just not ready. You can want it for him. You can teach it to him. You can try to show him the best way you can. But some of them not ready. He said, so if they ain't ready, you rest. Hmm. I said, well, Lord, I don't want to see nobody lost, though. I don't want to see nobody hurt, though. He said, yeah, I understand. But they might have to do that until they decide to be ready. I said, well, God, that's heavy. I don't think I want to tell them that. But I told you. Because hmm. he ain't going to beat me up. Because hmm. I'm ready by his grace. So we here today. You said, Pastor, I just want prayer. I, ain't, I don't even have no specific call for you. If you're here and you want me to pray, come on and let me pray. But I'm 